So, hello everybody. I'm Will, and this is Alex. And uh, we created Icecom, a way of adding WebRTC enabled live video and data to your app in under 10 lines of JavaScript, and now in uh, four lines of Angular. Yeah, that's, that's pretty beautiful. Okay, so a little bit of background. I'm Will, Alex. Our team member, Tony, uh, can't be here tonight, but uh, we, we started out on building Icecom because the, we knew the power of WebRTC, but it's an ex extraordinary challenge to get it all set up. So what is WebRTC? Well, I'll get Alex to start to introduce you to that. So, all right, so WebRTC is a set of protocols that allow for browser-to-browser -browser communication. Um, you first need a signaling server just to exchange sort of addresses between browsers, but as soon as that is established, then you have real peer-to-peer -peer connection. And it's sort of trending uh, right now. Last year, or last month, uh, WebRTC 1.0 came out. And the big deal of WebRTC is because that you don't need a server, um, you end up saving a lot of costs because you don't need that extra infrastructure. Yeah, and I should say, by the way, this is a pretty big group, but it's still intimate enough that if you guys have any questions, any thoughts, just throw your hands up and we'll talk about them now and we'll kind of you know, make this into a bit of a discussion. Uh, how this is going to pan out, we're going to talk through you know, some of the things that happened with Icecom. Uh, we're then going to jump into a workshop building your own video chat app with Angular, uh, which will be great fun. And, and then we'll talk about some of the amazing things you might be able to add to your apps or to your new projects with WebRTC. So as Alex says, Getting WebRTC set up can be a real challenge, but it is totally worth it. It moves all the power of video and audio communication into our domain, the domain of software engineers, which is incredible transformation, a really exciting piece of this. So here's something you can build. Um, you know, this, is, this is called three Real Faces, and it's 3D uh, rendered uh, webcam screens. So, so we've created Icecom to make all of this much, much easier. Uh, and we launched on Hacker News, and we launched on number two, which was really special. There's a huge amount of engagement and great feedback from the community. For example, uh, we then launched on Reddit, and it created a kind of impromptu uh, chat roulette. So we had a little JS Fiddle demo on our site where anybody could just go in and see, like, with the six lines and then eight lines of JavaScript that, in, that created this, and uh, stuff sort of went down uh, on it. But now, people are actually building pretty amazing things. So Virtual Carl, this is a team, 40 engineers. A lot of them work remotely. And they wanted to be able to control all the webcams in their office. So they wanted to move the video streaming piece of their daily stand-ups into a kind of dynamic thing. And they used no server. They used uh, um, Node WebKit and Icecom to create Virtual Carl, where they could control all the webcams in the office. All the remote people could kind of almost face the person they were talking to. It was pretty powerful and all sorts of other uses. And again, all this just was 10 lines of JavaScript. OK, so this is going to be the bulk of the conversation. Uh, just to pause, does anyone have any immediate questions before we jump in? OK, I can see so many. Uh, go ahead. Uh, to repeat the question, can you, can you uh, correct on, on Chrome, on Android, yes. Uh, there are ways of doing it on native. Uh, you can do it on native uh, Android apps, and then on iOS, there's ways of doing it. We'll talk about that a little bit more detail later on. Any more immediate questions? Let's jump into that question a little bit later. It's a good question, though. All right, so here's how it works with vanilla JavaScript. And you feel free to go to icecom.io and uh, click on the Vue.js fiddle, and this is what you'll basically see. So, Create a new Icecom object, uh, grab an API key to do so. Uh, then you set up a listener for when uh, you connect and uh, grab the video stream from your local webcam. You then set up a listener for uh, when your, your, your other peer connects, grab their video stream, pass it in as, and append it to the, to the body, and then you connect. So it's pretty simple. But we're not here to talk about the, the vanilla JavaScript version here. We're here to dig into the Angular, uh, the, the new Angular version. So here I'm going to pass to Alex. And Alex is going to walk everybody through. So everyone gets their laptops open, uh, walk through getting set up, 
with your own video chat uh, on Angular. And I should say, you're going to love this, we're actually going to pair program on this. So you're going to look to your part, yeah, I've seen a lot of eyes rolling there. But it's going to be, to be honest, a video chat by yourself is not as fun as when you pair program with someone else. So uh, I'm going to get Alex to lead everybody through creating their first video chat app powered by Angular module from iSculpt. Yeah, so everyone just uh, take a second to go to the GitHub link, fork it, and clone it to your desktop. All right. Yeah. I'm going to walk around and answer yeah. any impromptu yeah. questions. Yeah, so this is going to be more of like a workshop, so if you feel free if you have any questions along the way, um, me and Will will be able to walk you through it. All right, so just a preview. This is essentially what we're going to be building uh, in, without the styling, but this, the features and functions, what we've been building in uh, the demo that we're about to do. So again, it's just going to be a multi-person chat room so that anyone who just joins into your room, or anyone who goes into your URL will automatically be able to join your room. You can support many peers. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to be clear, everybody, you're going to go grab the, the Git the link, and then you're going to clone it down, okay? And then CD to it. All right. So just to get going, so essentially the end, the template code that we're going to start with right now is going to be in the examples folder. It's pretty much just going to have all the dependencies on the top, and it's just going to have an empty body, um, empty body element. So that's where we're going to start from here. Just to jump back two slides to make sure everybody got that link. I think a few people missed that link. Oh. We just jump yes, back. Yes. There we go. Yeah, just in case anyone missed the link, this is here. All right, cool. So pretty much uh, everyone, if everyone has a local copy on their desktop. Um, this is the code that we're going to start with. Um, and then the next step is actually for everyone to get an API key so that you can uh, utilize the service that we uh, utilize, Icecom. So just go to icecom.io, and there's going to be a tab to get an API key. Uh, it's really quick to sign up. It doesn't require any email verification. It takes like five seconds. Yeah, so just uh, to repeat what Will said, um, after you sign in, there's going to be an account tab on the top right-hand corner, and then your API key will be just right there. Okay, cool. So after you secure your API key, uh, you're just going to need to put it into your um, Inside the templates, the, there's a body directive right there, or there's a ISCOM directive inside the body tab, and you just need to insert your API key inside the API key attribute on the top. And then that will give you full support of ISCOM's platform. All right, so the way that ISCOM works, it's similar to Sockets. Um, it's a room-based system, meaning that if you join, or you will want to join a room, and if you join a room of other peers in there, it's going to fire an event handler, which will then be able to get you their video streams. So there's sort of four steps then involved in this. The first one is to connect to a room, and we created a directive um, called ISCOM-connect. That will be able to connect you to a room. Um, there are a few properties associated with it. There's a room attribute, which means which room that you want to enter. You can customize the room. You can, your API key can link you to multiple rooms. So you can just, that's a dynamic feature that you can add to your application. Uh, you can specify if you, whether or not you want audio or if you want to turn off audio, if you want to turn off video, um, just in case. We specify audio is false because there might be some feedback issues. And then um, the directive renders a button that allows you to you know, connect to a room. So you can sort of specify the properties of the, the button at the moment. We're adding a lot more features to make the connect directive more dynamic. Um, but just right now, these are the initial features. So just this directive alone, to summarize it, will allow, give you a button that will allow you to connect to a room. When you're inside a room, then you have access to other people's streams. All right. Uh, so the next step, actually, is to then there's sort of two things you either want to do. One is you want to load your video your local stream, and then there are other alternatives you want to load other people's videos. So there's one directive right now to load your own video, and wherever you put this is where your local video will then append. Um, so right now, it will not appear in the DOM until you actually receive a video element. 
And then so you can sort of add, you can modify this. You can put it anywhere you want. You can put it inside your you know, specific developments wherever you feel like you want to place it. And then the next one is the more the more interesting component is you want to load other people's videos. So the, there's an ISCOM peer director that means okay, assuming that you know someone else is in the room, what do you want to do with their video stream? And then you can pend, you can place their video elements. Uh, where the ISCOM peer directive is located. Okay. So with these three directives, you'll pretty much have the ability to load, render your own video, or yeah, render your own video, render other people's videos. And then we add one last directive, sort of leave the room. So if you leave the room, that means other people's videos disappear, your video disappears. You can place that button anywhere you want, and that's where this directive is located. You can, yeah, that's where this video is located. Um, we added this feature called pre-stream that allows you to, because sometimes you don't want the hang up button to appear until other people are actually, until you actually have other people's videos. So we add this attribute called pre-stream that makes it so that the button, the hang up button does not appear unless you're actually connected to other people. And yeah, and then you have a multi-person video chat app with those four lines, those four directives. So what else can you do with WebRTC? So we've seen over the last two weeks Periscope and Meerkat completely blow up and that's one amazing opportunity uh, with WebRTC but there's a lot more and what WebRTC is going to do long term is, you know, it, it, there's huge potential but short term what can you actually add to your apps right now? And here are just a few things that are being done at the moment that I think you guys might want to do with WebRTC, you may want to use ISCOM. Um, customer support. So contextual video and audio support and also tech support is very powerful. So on contextual, by that, by that I mean on the one hand, you grab the information, so someone's on your e-commerce site, for example, or, or whatever, and you press, you know, help or, or whatever sort of the OLAG equivalent button is, and the customer support person gets access to your checkout basket, to the time you spent on the site, whatever it is, all passed over data streams with WebRTC. Uh, on top of that, this now sort of, there's so much innovation happening around WebRTC uh, and uh, by developers, you can actually uh, imagine sort of scenarios like setting a audio support button to be conditional on, uh, for example, how long somebody's been waiting on the site and the size of, their, of the, the checkout. So they have 400 bucks of goods in their, in their basket and they've been waiting for two minutes that's when you initiate an audio support call as a support person. And those sort of ideas, they're still early stage for people, but there's some really interesting stuff being done on that. Uh, and marketplace apps, this is fairly, fairly obvious. There's going to be uh, an opportunity to really build on live. Uh, a lot of the sort of communication that was done in person can be done uh, using WebRTC. Education, broadcast is still, uh, which is a, a lot of what education is, is, is still in the, its infancy for WebRTC. There are ways of doing WebRTC uh, one-to-many connections, but it's still v relatively early stage. WebRTC was designed for one-to-one uh, -one or few-to-few, -few, but not for broadcast. But there are some really interesting things that have been done, do, done around that. And then obviously for, for any situation where you can use WebRTC, you are reducing server load, and, and that's a, a huge opportunity for, for lots, of existing, lots of existing apps. So there you go. That's uh, the introduction to WebRTC, to ICECOM. Uh, we will continue to work with you guys to get your, uh, get your video chat apps running. But in the meantime, we've got a few minutes for questions. What is the custom room? Um, so the question is, what is the custom room that we're using to connect, connect the room? That really can be any name that you like. That's, uh, it's, it's really up to you. To that. Okay. So uh, each application that you would want to build would have like one API key. So if everyone was sharing one API key uh, and then everyone joined the same room, then everyone would be in that giant conference call. So, but if you want your application to have like multiple rooms, you don't want everyone to be in one room, then you would you know, have different room names for that. Further questions? It's a great question. So the, uh, Alice can go into one other way of doing this, but one fairly standard way of doing this is domain locking. So if you look on, the, uh, on your account page, you can actually lock 
uh, your API key to a particular domain. It's, it's the second best solution. There's another way of doing it, which Alex will sort of describe. It's serving up from server. Oh, and yeah, there's a handful of hacky ways. There's a, we're working on a better way, but we're currently you can either server your API key through your back through your server so that you, know, you don't have to display it if someone you know, goes to Chrome, opens Chrome DevTools. Um, the linking, locking your API key to your domain is another way so that if someone else tries to use it but they're not using your you know, uh, root domain name, then they just don't have access to anything. And then uh, another way is you can actually, there's a, button, there's a button there just in case someone does have your API key, you can render a new API key as well. So it's generating essentially new tokens. All right, more questions? Or we're good. All right. Thank you so much, guys.